Hey, everybody, and welcome to Conversations for Peace. I'm Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach, and we are on day number 29. First off, let me just say, in numerology, you know, 9 plus 2 is an 11. So this is a real day of power. It's a day of mastery. And um, I think you're really going to enjoy our master that we have with us today. Her name is Natalie Yotis. And hello, Natalie, how are you? Hi, Marcy. I'm fine. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. And so happy that you're here with us. I've been having the most wonderful time um, having these conversations and bringing people together who have shared their questions, their thoughts, their comments, and also how energetically they have been shifting through this period. So we know that it has a great influence when we come together with an intention as powerful as cultivating peace. So we need to begin, Natalie, first by asking you, what is peace to you? So thank you for welcoming me to this forum. I think it's a, it's a wonderful question. And I did look up some definitions of peace. Um, the one that really spoke to me is, is this one. It says the notion of success, fulfillment, wholeness, security, well-being, totality. Those are some of the, um, the words they use to describe peace. And I gave a lot of thought to that question um, when you had first asked me to come onto your podcast. And I think that peace is a state of being that is individual to each person because all of us were given free will, right? When we were created, free will to make the decision on how, what we want to believe in and how we want to feel. And as a coach, I, I use that a lot in my sessions because you want to establish what the client's intention is. And a lot of times the common denominator is they want peace. They want to leave the session feeling peaceful, but peaceful could mean something different to each person that comes for a session, right? Because one person may want to maybe feel peaceful about a decision they're going to make uh, and peace means confidence to them. And then another person has a decision to make and peace means free of thought about it anymore. So for each person, peace means something different. For me, peace is a knowing and a connection to higher self, not forgetting that it always exists. And that's where I feel most peaceful. Uh, another tool I use with my clients is, is who are you in this moment? We speak from different parts of ourselves. So we have our little person that has experienced things they need to heal to in order to create awareness about where they want to go. And then we have the egoic thinking that usually is protect, protective of that, that inner child that is not thinking outside of the box, but more so is just thinking, this is where I stand on this. And then you have your higher self, which starts to ask questions like, how do I feel in this moment? And how do I want to feel? And if the answer is peaceful, then you say, okay, well, what's stopping me, right, from having that peace? And the last part is, what would I need to do to get to peace? And what is, what is peace to me? What, know what the intention of peace is. And so being willing to kind of step outside of the dialogue that you're having that's stopping you from moving to that place and using your free will to say, well, right now I'm feeling sad because, you know, we're, we're in a state in the world of, of confusion, but I want to feel peaceful about this. So I'm going to shift my way of thinking and say, how can I do that? Well, I would have to focus on that and not the latter. So for me, peace is the willingness to create a mindset that brings you to a feeling that defines peace for you. You bring up so many wonderful points about peace. First off, um, 
I want to just sort of put some light on the fact that peace is manifested in many different ways. Um, and how we seek it out may be manifested in as many ways, right? So I guess my question is, how can an energy like peace be the answer in so many different situations? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And I think that we come into this world as an energy that already knows peace. It, it's kind of like um, the movie, The Wizard of Oz. She, you know, she enters this world of unknown and um, she's running all over the place trying to help others find these things that they're looking for. And the whole time she's saying, really what I wanna do is go home. And by the end of the movie, you know that she had the ability to do that the whole time. So peace is an energy that is home because that's how we enter into this physical body is with the energy of peace and love, which connects together beautifully. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're both, a, they're all, I should say, of the same wavelength. So why do you think that peace is so confusing to people? That's a really good question too. I mean, you know, the core of my work over the years, you know, personally has been to understand the way that my mind works. I never knew I had a choice on how I wanted to feel. I just knew how I felt and what my story was. And usually we're in a victim mentality that's very hard for us to shift out because we didn't, don't even know we have a choice. So we may, we may be born into say just society in general. What does society focus on? If they're focusing on peace, that's what we'll learn, right? If they're focusing on struggle, that's what we'll learn. For instance, our children go to school and they learn, right? They learn how to use their brains and they learn how to use their physical body. But are they learning how that they have the free will to choose how they want to feel? They may say, I'm, you know, I'm scared. It's my first day of school. I'm scared I won't make any friends. But are they asked, well, how do you want to feel? Have, take them to a time. Have you ever been scared about this before and made a friend and felt really good about it? So to answer your question, I think that, you know, it's the circumstances in which we grow up in create our story that we get addicted to, if you will, as being either the victim of your circumstance. And when you learn, you have the free will to change that to shift to this place of if your intention is peace, it could be wholeness, it could be um, a state of completion. Maybe you're in a situation that you've been kind of in that role of victim and you wanna change the way you're thinking. And then you realize that you're the creator of your, of your path, then you're getting to a place of completeness and that maybe that's what your intention is. But what is completion? How does that make you feel? And it could be, peaceful. So I, I really have so much appreciation for what you're saying. And I can't help but wonder um, how what you're what you are offering, how it can be used for those who are in this cycle right now of not recognizing, perhaps that what they're searching for is peace. And so maybe these are the protesters or those who are violent and those who are destructive. How would you, how would you bring them this offering? Hmm. How would you relate to them? Because they very much may be entrenched in that whole victimization, right? And we know the density of that energy. Mm -hmm. How do we remind people that at the end of the day, we really are looking for peace? That's, that's another really good question. And um, if I could share a story with you that maybe shed some light. Sure, love to. So I, I work on, as a holistic esthetician, I work on all different people, professionals. And uh, recently I had a police officer um, who did several tours 
in um, the Middle East and has been a police officer for many, many years. And I asked him, he's very close to retirement. So I said, so, you know, did we pick a date yet? And he said, actually, no, I didn't. And I said, well, so many police officers are eager to retire uh, now. And he said, you know, I'm not. And I said, well, I, I would love to hear why. And he said, because I, I would like to be able to go into the communities where we're having this unrest and build trust. Wow. And allow them to understand that I am here to hear you and to see what are your needs and how can I help you? So I think the answer is, and, and I really was blown away by that response. I, I've had so much more. I, I had God bumps as you were saying it actually. Yeah. And I think it's entering any situation with compassion and love for all human beings. And, you know, for me personally, my belief is we come from one, we are one, we're all, we're all interconnected to each other. And what was really helpful to me was the four agreements, the book, the four agreements, oh, yeah. where we talk about not judging their actions of somebody who is maybe not in a place of creator and in that victim mentality, not assuming the reasons why or what they're going to do, right? to do your best. So is, are we doing our best by not saying anything? Are we doing, are we overdoing our best by, you know, feeding them this, this feeding the fuel to the anger? Or is our best really to raise the collective consciousness of compassion and love so that they feel that? And building a trust, hearing people, I, I hear you're angry. I, I want to understand what that's about for you. I want, I want to know how you really want to feel at the end of the day. I love these questions because what they do is they sort of give us the opportunity to recognize, as you said earlier on, we have free will, we have choice, and it's there present for us at all times. But what that also means is that we have the freedom to look at things differently if we choose to. But it is a choice. It is a choice to say, you know what? Let me take a look at peace. And I loved, you know, all of the different descriptions, um, descriptive words, you know, that you used in the beginning about peace. And one really stood out for me, and that was fulfillment. And I think that perhaps so much of what we're seeing with all of the unrest is a lack of fulfillment in life. And so when we look to maybe define peace for ourselves, we'll have a better understanding of how to achieve it, how to cultivate it, what we have to let go of, what we have to bring more of into our lives, but also into our possibilities. And I love so much your story about the officer and how powerful that would be if that comes to fruition. And I want you to know, I'm gonna hold that vision because if he is in this space of being unfulfilled by his job until he does this, I know that that will happen. Whether it's you know him being involved directly or just the thought of that because he can't be the only one who's feeling that, who doesn't want to walk away with this unfinished business. And what is the unfinished business? Connecting heart to heart with all of those that they have dedicated their lives to really serving and protecting and are now sort of on the outside looking in and saying, what more can I do? What more can I give? How can I make this better for them? And so we start to see each other on this equal playing field, don't we? Where we really all do want the same things, except we may not recognize that. And we may not know exactly how to go about doing that. But of course, conversations like this, and as it's being shared and people talk about it and people start to question themselves, so, what is peace for me? And what would I be willing to give up in order to do that? What would I be willing to allow myself to see differently in order to have that? 
So do you have any suggestions or recommendations for people in terms of how they can find more peace in their lives and perhaps bring it really to the forefront of their beingness? Yeah, I think you just hit, hit the nail on the head with willingness. Ask yourself, are you willing to create peace? And what would it look like for you? What does peace look like for you? And what would you be willing to let go of in order to be able to shift to that place of peace? It's all within us. It's not um, the systems. I was watching uh, this woman, uh, Lori Ladd is her name, and she yeah. was she was beautifully explaining, um, you know, the ascension process and uh, and the systems and and becoming the observer of of how we react to those systems from whether we're in the 3D vibration or the 5D vibration. And um, a healer that I also work with, um, my friend Chris, he explained it like people become their thoughts instead of becoming the observer of their thoughts. So if we are watching something on TV and you, you all of a sudden you feel a feeling of anger, well, the observer would say, oh, well, that's interesting. I'm, I'm feeling anger. What's that about? Well, you know, uh, it's about, you know, what I'm seeing. It's, it's scary. I don't want people to hurt each other. Well, well, that's interesting. Okay. Well, how do you want to feel about this? Well, you know, I want to feel peaceful. I want to feel, I want to feel that there's, there's something I can do. Well, okay. What would you have to shift out of in order to be able to get to that place of action? Well, I'd have to let go of that fear of the anger that I'm experiencing right now. Okay, so what would a step look like? And this could be a baby step. Well, I could go into my meditation room and I could just raise the vibration of love and peace, putting on some music and, and, and just setting at that intention. And that's one step I can take towards creating the outcome I'm looking for. All of those are wonderful recommendations. And I can't help but think about, you know, the fact that it, what you're describing is, is a really sort of high level of self-awareness that um, is necessary in order for someone to be making those decisions for self. But I agree with you. I think that our ability, I call it being the spiritual observer Mm -hmm. um, where we step into ourselves, our higher selves as spirit and observe what's happening um, and how powerful that is because it does open up more choices for us. And something as simple as just giving yourself that quiet space. So let's say you've never meditated before, right? Mm -hmm. And the thought of it is a little bit scary, but the other part of it is, ugh. That's just way too woo woo for me. And yet, you know that there's this calling inside to be more at peace. You have the same yearning as everyone else, whether it is in their conscious thoughts or not. And meditation has come up actually quite a few times in these conversations, as you can imagine. And one thing that I want to point out is that meditation can be anything at all that you experience that simply takes you out, takes you inside rather than outside. So you're in your inside world and you're leaving the outside world just where it is, just for a few moments. And that's all you really need to do. So... Yeah. We come back to this intention over and over and over again, but it must be followed up with that willingness, like you said, and the willingness must lead us to action. Yes, and, and you're right. Simply, simply said, we, we were born and the first thing we, we did was breathe. And people forget that breath is a, a way to get to a state of peace, right? So it could be as simple as maybe at night going to sit on your porch and you're hearing the crickets and you're feeling a cool breeze and you just breathe and you feel the breath in your body and think, what in me doesn't feel balanced right now? Okay, maybe it's my neck and shoulders. Let me just let it out. Sure. 
So you're connecting to what is your spirit in that moment of breath. It could be connecting to any of the elements, going by the ocean. A lot of people like to be by the water or sitting in the sun and feeling that sun, using, using all the elemental nature around you. And for people it is, it's hiking, it's walking, it's biking. It's, it's for some people, it's you know a cup of tea and their puppy on their lap. Yes. And, and they mm-hmm. breathe into that moment where they feel peace. You know, self-care isn't just about going in and having you know, a treatment done, but it's how am I caring for my being for myself right. in this moment? Am I just checking in and saying, how's everybody today, physical, emotional, and spiritual? Let me breathe into that and kind of scan and check in and see how I'm feeling and make some adjustments. These are simple tools yeah. that take seconds. And yet are so powerful. Yes. Yeah. Natalie, thank you so much for being here today. I think that you've shared so many wonderful perspectives about peace and ways that we can explore how to bring more peace into our lives and, of course, release the peace that's already there in our hearts. Um, How can people connect with you, find out more about you, what you do? Where can they find you? Sure. I have a website. It's www.serenitybeautyandwellness.com. Very long. And the end is A-N-D. Ah, very nice. Terrific. And um, can people connect with you directly there? Can they leave you messages? Uh, They they can leave me. They can email me from there. I'm also on Facebook under Natalie Otis, A-C-C-C-A-L-C. Um, and Serenity Beauty and Wellness Center is also on Facebook. Uh, we have Instagram as well. So um, yeah, they can find me. Great. Any and we'll have those links also on this page. Mm-hmm. And again, I want to thank you. And I'd like to invite you to join me um, as I recite my peace pledge that I have done for the last 29 days and will continue to do so. Um, And of course, for any of you who haven't yet uh, downloaded that, you can get seven ways to cultivate peace and a copy of the Peace Pledge at heartshiftcoach.com. And so here's my pledge to you. I pledge to extend peace into my entire circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart cultivating clear intentions, so much of what we spoke about today, taking personal responsibility, initiating myself as that spiritual observer and taking responsibility for my beliefs, how they affect everything around me, my thoughts, how they affect everything around me, my choices, how they affect everything around me, my actions, how they affect everything around me, and my experiences, how they affect everything around me. And so we're seeing the my that becomes the we, the ours. And so, of course, as I'm in this energy of such extreme self-awareness, I'm able to take compassionate action. And that's part of my pledge to you. I also take this peace pledge and I pass it from my peaceful heart to yours because I know that your heart is also filled with peace. And so I'm wishing you peace beyond all understanding. Peace in the forefront of all that you do and know that each of us is blessed with this peace that's already within me and it's already within you. So peace in, peace out until tomorrow. Thank you so much, Natalie. It was wonderful having you here today. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye everybody.